Well, hello and welcome to another edition of Let's Read My Fan Fiction Identity Quest. It is the first ever official Vaishnav fan fiction on the internet. And also another installment of Who Can Listen to Me Run My Mouth the Longest? So far, not many of you have managed to reach the end of my video. Hmm. And I thought the pandemic would be bad enough that people will listen to me speaking. Well, you have better taste than that, obviously. So, we're going at chapter number 13. Three Devotees of God versus Underground Tokyo. Or... The whole project characters really are two OPs and I don't know how to nerf them. Well, believe it or not, but the nerfing happens, it, it happened. By God's mercy, I just realized that, you know, Miko, Toyosato Mimi no Miko, and, um, as, well, especially Crucial Creeper or Nanashi, you know, they have some pretty big, I mean, I wouldn't call them glass cannon because, you know, they can take some abuse. But at the same time, Krishna Kripa is still recovering from years of malnutrition. And Mokara, while she's quick, she's easily affected by sound. So, yeah, it's a more balanced than I thought. Thank you, Krishna. Okay, so let's start. This is Rada speaking. Ah, Shesha Radar. Radha flatly repeated. Yes, this device will enable us to know when the big flaming snake will strike next, letting us evacuate and prepare to fight him off. Oh, the old doctor Matsuda spoke with clear enthusiasm, moving around his cluttered office as he fiddled with this, with this, took a took a, st a stack of paper and was just overall hard to follow. You mean we, the holder of the Ame no Habakiri, will be tasked to slay the ancient Naga? Mokara spoke without much enthusiasm, her doll-like hands resting on the hilt of the legendary sword, the ancient blade resting at her hip as if it had always been meant to be there. Okay, the lack of enthusiasm was a sentiment Krishna Kripa shared fully, since he was not only frost-sensitive, but also very weak to fire, as Plant had a tendency to be. I may be the son of two powerful women, but this means nothing if a bit of, if a, if a bit of, hit, of heat and cold is all that's needed to end me. He remembered the first time he had faced off, faced off the flaming Hydra, the heat, the heat alone had been enough to put him out of commission. That and the realization that Yuki, his Yuki, the one he had thought had died 30 years ago with his head in her lap, was standing right in front of them, controlled by the agglomeration of humanity's desire to die. Something that he felt like the personification of nihilism. Nihilism is bad, kids. Stay away from that. Thankfully, being a personalist and having met God personally, Krishna Kripa had no fear of falling for it. Fire and ice, on the other hand, and it's like the two most common elemental magic out there, he grumbled internally. Sure, I can shoot the freaking Master Spark, as long as the dude I want dead don't get a first hit on me. He didn't even know how he'd managed to pull it off. I guess I'll just stick with my to my shovel then. He reached back to feel the God-given spade. The spade, the lotus by his ear, his clothes, the chas, his friendship, his teasing, the time he gave to a conditioned soul, that one kiss on his hair. Those were all God's show of love, a love Krishna Kripa didn't deserve. His mother took his hand, giving it a squeeze. Hey, don't worry, everything will be fine. Krishna Kripa let out the breath through his nose. So, this is a very, rather simple quest, quest, if you ask me. Dr. Matsuda held his hands together. His held his hand together, his balding head reflecting the artificial light almost comically. 
You just need to get in the sky tower and climb the whole structure until you reach the workers' rest area. The component should be there somewhere. Convenient, and yet not. This feels just like the whole tree crest to open the seal sort of crap. I see. Then we will be on our way to get what you require for the radar. We just need to prepare for the upcoming fight. Mokara spoke, her voice confident, and her posture radiating a type of gentle power that could move mountain. Great! The old doctor clapped his hands together as he beamed. Once the components are all gathered and I finish the radar, wait, whacking that big old snake dead won't be much of a challenge, the doctor puffed his chest. Krishna Kripa hid how much he didn't look forward facing the face shisha. Wait, I'm just going to check something. Yeah, okay, I just had this deja vu and I just wanted to make sure I'm not reposting something. Sorry. Thus, having spoken, Dr. Matsuda showed them the door and returned to whatever a Japanese doctor does behind closed door. Sorry, bit of a niche. Yeah, accidental ASMR. After a trip to the teleporter, nope, Kripa still hated the thing, the small group returned to Cafe Florida. There, Skin greeted Mukara with folded palms and, taking her to a discreet corner, began to ask her some questions on the Bhagavad Gita, Bhagavad Gita as it is, while Kripa was being fed by his aunt. Okay, so when I speak about the Bhagavad Gita, I am speaking about a specific edition. This edition is the Bhagavad Gita as it is by His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, founder Acharya of the of the International Society for Krishna Consciousness. Uh, it is the second edition. The cover is bright golden yellow, and you see Arjuna and Krishna on the battlefield of Kurukshetra, of course. This, once again, I cannot push it enough. This edition is the best, the foremost. Um, it is the end all of be all. If you want to enter to Krishna Consciousness, this is the first book. This is the ABC of Bhakti. And Srila Prabhupada makes sure every single verses are dutifully explained in a way that even me could understand it. Okay, so being fed by his aunt, meaning the Hellcat, the one that kept killing him on easy on his way to the Fort Boss. Yeah, so Krishna Kripa... Uh, is a Toho player. He has played a few games, but you know, this being underground Tokyo, uh, anything which is entertainment is ungodly expensive, and um, you know, it's rare to find those CDs because it, you know, it's, they are rare in this Hermitage Tokyo. And he played. Um, you know, I don't think he played Mountain of Fate, but he played Phantasmagoria of Flower View. He loved to play Yuka, of course. Uh, and he also played um, Subterranean Animism, but he never managed to reach the final boss. Um, also, yes, um, in Subterranean Animism, those who are devotees of the Lord, meaning if you go on YouTube, and you go to either Pineapple Disciple or Mima, or is it Pineapple? Well, one person who's Pineapple. The other one, which is Mima's Disciple, or Flounds. Uh, well, Flounds is for 10 hours, if 10 minutes, if you can do that. Um, or Flounds Old World, if you're into the old one. Um, in the song that you can send the Mahamantra in, and it fits beautifully, is... Um, Mizuhashi Pasi's theme, the bridge nobody crosses. No, wait, it's uh, the one with the jealousy, the, her second theme. Hoshimukuma Yugi, um, walking through the streets of hell. And her... Uh, anyway, first and second theme. Um, I haven't seen the, the titles for long. I just, I just hear them. I don't read them. Um, there's also... Um, Arin Kainbo's theme, uh, first and second. 
there is um, a Satori Komeji steam, the first one, and Utsuho steam. And I actually, I just realized it's almost every Girls of Hell has the holy name in their steam song. Yes, even Koishi has the holy name. And for her, it makes so much sense for her to be a devotee, this little Ko Koishi Komeji. Komeji, Koichi, Koichi, ah. Okay, so a bit of meditation 101 and what happens if you don't listen to your mind. So Koichi, so little Koichi, Koichi, when she closed her, her eyes, she stopped listening to her mind. So people think, oh, you know, she's completely blank. She's like a Buddhist and she's just following her subconscious. Okay, but what is a subconscious? Where does it come from? Well, the subconscious is the super soul in your heart. It's the Vishnu expansion. It's uh, Ksiro Dakashai Vishnu. No, no, it's, is it Ksiro Dakashai or Garbo Dakashai? Now, as yes, just yesterday, I read in the Shuman Bhagavatam about how the universe, you know, who comes in first and all the avatars. And it's actually explained that the three Vishnus is really just Vishnu. The other part of his name, that's just his location. Um, so, Vishnu is in everyone's heart. You know when you say God's in your heart? Well, he, he is. And when you, you can experience that when you have, you know, this, um, you know, she's, uh, she's going to go down sensor, you know, when you feel you're not safe in one place or you just know something's going to happen. Or if you have, if you're a parent, you know, when your kid's about to go into trouble, you know, the sixth sense, well, actually that's a misnomer that the sixth sense, that's the mind, the seventh sense. Yeah. That's God screaming at you. <laughs> Why screaming? Because right now, your mind is so loud, you cannot hear him. Your false ego, as I am the controller, I am the one, everything I see belong to me. Well, this, ed your ego edge gods out. Yes, ego stand also stands for something else. Edging God out. And I'm talking, this is the false ego. Real ego is catching God in. <laughs> um, so Koishi closed her mind. She just rejected her mind altogether. So what was left? So mind, it's not just Koishi's mind, but it's also Koichi's false ego. So the mind is actually part of the subtle body. The subtle body has three parts. The false ego, the intelligence, and the, uh, and the mind. Now those three together, basically that's a ghost. Without, you know, without skin, without material body, that's the ghost. That's what's left when the body dies before it's time, as I've spoken in the previous chapters. So Koishi, rejected that and thus attained moksha or well basically she hurt herself she hurt she rejected it but without this the lord being merciful revealed herself revealed himself to koichi and when koichi so koichi reestablished her false ego and she reestablished her intelligence, but this intelligence and ego is, has now been pure. Okay, let me try that again. So Koichi, the moment she saw Vishnu in her heart after she closed her eyes and, you know, looked around, because yes, God is in your heart physically. Sure, you may not see it, but if God, you're, but it's calculated that he's six inches tall. Six inches, it's... A bit smaller than my tablet, and oh my god, he's just so cute. <laughs> so, Koishi, she met the Lord, she met Vishnu. And by his darshan, she regained her true ego, which is um, Krishna Bhartu Padakamala Yora Dasa Das Anudas, is 
Um, I'm not whatever material identity I am. I am eternally the servant of the servant of the servant of uh, the lover of the gopis, a thousand times removed. And for her, that's what she realized. Even though it was Vishnu, she still realized, I'm your servant. Because this is the supreme identity of the soul. We are all servant of God. We are all serving something or someone. And in the material world, those we serve are inadequate. They're not good. Because those persons, you know, they cannot give you the pleasure you want. There's sometimes, many times, you'll be disappointed and it'll be a source of grief and anger and anxiety and, and you know, it's just not fun. Second, they're not perfect. Their senses are not perfect. They, you know, they cannot see what the truth for what it is. They can't speak the truth for what it is. And they are will cheat. And they are also following people with imperfect senses. So it's just like the blind leading the blind. So you cannot trust them implicitly because there's time in which you'll be, they'll be wrong. So more anxiety. And third, even if you're in the best relationship ever we're talking you're with your soulmate and everything goes well and you know you tolerate whatever life throws at you then there's death there's old age there's disease and you lose everything when you go into a relationship with krishna with the lord the lord know past present and future the lord will never lie to you and if he if he ever does lie to you, no, that is because he's aiming at another, you know, he's aiming at bringing you to some place better. He only has what's best in mind for you. And that's, that's I'm telling this with the complete and utter conviction because, you know, I've been practicing for five years. I've had my computer stolen, replace it with a better computer. I have my tablet broken, replace it. Okay, so the tablet I'm using right now may not be the best, but it does get the job done. But whatever will happen is for the best. Um, and it's always aiming at churning the love in your heart for him. Krishna loves butter. Butter is done by churning. In your heart, there's a notion of milk. Yes, there's a notion of milk in your heart. It's subtle, but it's there. No, don't ask a biologist to find it. He will only find blood, okay? <laughs> so it's just like ask a biologist to find God in your heart and he will fail. But actually there's one time, okay, proof that the Lord is in one's heart. One time, Srila Prabhupada, this was when he was back in India, when he was buying land to build and establish Iskhan temples. Um, and he was doing that all over the world. Uh, there was a man who criticized Prabhupada that you're only talking about material things. You're not talking about God. You're not thinking about God. And Srila Prabhupada looked at him and he says, put your ears in my, put your ear on my back and listen to my heart. So the man does. And at the moment he put his ears to Srila Prabhupada's back, he gets blown away. Why? Because here's what he hear, heard in Srila Prabhupada's heart. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Krishna is absolute, meaning his holy name is Krishna, meaning the holy name of Krishna is being ever chanted in Srila Prabhupada's ever purified heart. That's Krishna. Krishna is in Srila Prabhupada's heart. And if Srila Prabhupada and Krishna want to reveal themselves to you, they will. If not, you know, it's just like, I know people are like, you know, adore going on social media and spread all their dirty laundries out, but there's still some things they like to keep back, you know. And for Krishna, Krishna being shy, and you know, sometimes he don't want to. Okay. So, yes, Koichi is not just hearing her subconscious. 
She's not just going randomly to places because, well, that's the mind. Going and doing random things because, you know, you're just asked, acting on your so-called subconscious. That's not the subconscious. That's the mental level. And mental level, that's a kid just crying in the store because he wants this. He wants that. He wants this. He don't want that. He wants this. He don't want that. He wants this. That's the mind. Accepting, rejecting. Koichi rejected that. The soul that is in Koichi's body rejected that and thus turned back to Krishna. So, in my opinion, you know, my Koichi Koichi, my Koichi Koichi, she was a Vaishnavi even before um, Mikhail uh, Mik as Mukara and Mandodhari, because yes, Mandodhari apparently also was, okay, she was accidentally spirited away to get Sokyo, and then Yukari thought, hey, you know what, you look interesting, tell me what you practice. And the next thing she knows, she has Yukari uh, got a identity crisis. But even before that, the reason why Yukari went to open a gap in nowhere Montreal to get this random drunkard and instead caught a Vaishnavi that's because Koichi Kobeji, with the help of Paramatma, controlled Yukari. <laughs> you see how that works? <laughs> okay. So, yeah. Sorry about that. So, meaning the Hellcat, the one that kept killing him on easy on his way to the fort boss, was lovingly ladling on his plate the, this porridge made of beans and rice with some vegetable mixed in. It was warm, fresh, fragrant, made with love and offered to Krishna with all the bhakti Radha Shema Sundara had. And the taste was out of this world, with different spices Kripa knew by taste, but not by name. Radha kept filling his plate, openly fussing over him. Her purrs of pleasure and tears that flowed from her eyes told the returned Vaishnava that he had been missed. After his fifth bowl and a nap, his mother would not let him stay awake. He needed all the rest he could get before things would get ugly. The small reconstituted family were in the armory given access by skin of all person. Mukara had to change her prosthetic. Radha wanted to change in some pants and Kripa, as much as he loved his lion shirt, Narashima Dev, or Krishna as the supreme protector, the thing was dirty, had already garnered a few holes and one burn mark. No way Kripa would let this divine shirt get destroyed. Thankfully, they found a few sets of clothes that would fit him. Clothes, clots, clothes, there's missing an X, an H, I need to pass that back in my uh, Grammarly, all of them with a half fly and half man incarnation of all of them, okay, the, sh the shirts he's talking about, with the half fly and half man incarnation of Krishna, Arjuna and Krishna in the chariot, with the entire Bhagavad Gita printed on the back, and one with Hanuman burning down Lanka. Thank you, Krishna, he thought, as he chose the Gita one, wanting the ancient text to remain with him. And then he realized something. Mom, I thought you forgot your prosthetic, Kripa said as he inspected his shovel. Even after all the demons he had killed, the blade still held its sharpness and the shaft was still straight. Ah, yes. I honestly forgot about them, Mukara sheepishly rubbed the back of her head. Really? Forgetting about your prosthetic? But as Shema Sundar pointedly asked, one ear comically flattening on her head. Well, I was disturbed. Can't I be forgiven about forgetting my legs and arms when expecting to recover the dead body of my only son? She was. She shot back, clearly annoyed. Oh, well, he ain't a dead... Well, all right, it's a dead body, but KK's still in it, you know? The Kasha joyfully spoke from the top of the locker. Still inside. Oh, you're referencing, referencing the Gita, right? Krishna Kripa tried to remember the verse. Or was it in the commentaries? Yup. 
basically, the bodies we have right now are made of material element like water, fire, wind, earth, sound, false ego, mind, and intelligence. Now, all of them fancy elements, they are dull and dead, she explained. So, what's the difference between a living body and a dead body? Krishna Kripa asked as he sat down to tie his army boots, eager to remember this eternal knowledge. The soul KK is a the soul KK. That is the difference. A living body is a machine. Okay, the soul KK. A living body body is a machine with the bat with the battery and the cartridge. Radha Shema Sundar explained from the from her spot on the in on the bench. I need to run that back in grammar. It's so bad. The soul's the battery, and the player, the karma, the game, and the console's the material world. Ah, yeah, that makes sense. Dead body, no battery, no cartridge. It's easy to fo- Is it easy to follow? She asked. Krishna Kripa nodded with a wide grin. This body's like a yantra, a machine, and the soul sits in the heart like the driver in the car. Okay, uh, forgive my Sanskrit. Mukara quoted, Sri Bhagavan Krishna said in the Bhagavad Gita, as it is, chapter 18, shloka, verse 61, the Supreme Lord is situated in everyone's heart. Yes, Krishna spoke to him, speaks to himself in the third person. O Arjuna, and is directing the wandering of all living entities who are seated on it, on it as on a machine made of material, who are seated as on a machine made out of material nature, of material energy. She ended her recitation as she began to test her fighting set. But since our previous dead has robbed us of our previous memories, the Lord in the heart reminds us of our previous desire and guides us to attain what we want. Something, a realization hit the returned son of Mukara. Mom, does this mean that every tragedy, that this, this is, everything's Krishna's, everything is Krishna's doing? He didn't want to think about it. He didn't like it. Paramatma is the neutral expression of the Supreme of the Supreme. He has neither friend nor enemy. He simply gives our due like an aloof judge. Mukara's words of wisdom echoed in the room. The Lord is not callous by any means, but he is also impartial. Okay, so Super Soul gives, makes us act on certain desires and this makes karma, Krishna Kripa resumed. But to, but to make karma, we need to have some free will. Radha Shama Sundra added, Basically, the ability to make our own decisions. If you desire to follow the rules, you get some nice perks like good food, wealth, beauty, intelligence, worthy sons, and even a birth in Swarga. Don't follow the rules set by God and... And you get the opposite. Karun, Karuna Sindhu. Spoilers! Krishna Kripa finished. Mukara gave the wry smile. Many people become atheists because they think hell will cease to exist if they stop believing in it, going as far as to deny everything but some lies. And even voidism, voidism as a mean to explain what happens after that. She snorted. A child does not escape from a due punishment by hiding from his loving parents. Yeah, but ever since everyone in Kali Yuga self-entitled, it's never their fault. And they don't want to extend more effort than necessary in something unscientific as God, the soul, and reincarnation. The Kasha made some air quotes. Thing is, material science ain't all that, that's all that scientific in the first place. It's basically a bunch of theory that may or may not be true, and if proven to be true, becomes a lie later. Rada snorted. I did take more faith to believe in something as fallible as modern science, modern empiric science, than the descending Vedic knowledge. But don't you dare tell that to atheists. I swear, they are like more sen- the most sensitive about that. 
Ironically, to be a taste and is now on the same level as being a heretic. And to be a godless materialistic with flimsy moral compass is absolutely normal, Mokara commented as she got to her feet. What is night for the materialist is day for the spiritualist, and what is night for the spiritualist is day for the materialist, Krishna Kripa quoted with a big smile. This felt normal. It felt comfort it felt comfortingly familiar. For a materialist, God means nothing. And for a pious soul, no matter their religion, God gives everything. And for a Gaudiya Vaishnav, Krishna is everything. Mokara spoke with a bright smile. Yeah, and no matter your birth or how bad your astrological chart is, if you chant his holy name, you're considered to be most fortunate to be the most fortunate soul in the entire Brahmanda, Radha declared. A Brahmanda, another Sanskrit name for the universe. Krishna Kripa grinned. Then I took my birth in a very opulent family then. Yeah, bet. You're one mama, the ancient prince of Japan, a level three earthly hermit, a Buddha, a world-renowned and all-around pure devotee of Bhagavan. Radha Radha Shema Sundar joyfully declared as she jumped in Mukara's new arms, lovingly nuzzling her. In cat form, of course. Well, this glory I have well this glory I have is only due to our master, Rupanuga Swami. Without him and my god sister Mandodari, I would either be dead at the bottom of the Sunzu or haplessly lost in India. Probably practicing some hodgepodge yoga or, God forbid, big back in politic. The words made Radha hiss and jump out. Ah, politic. Mukara smirked. Now, if you really want to see a pure devotee, look no further than your dear auntie Sri Radha. Yeah, Radha protested. I knew you want me to be pure now, but I'm like the lustiest cat on the block. Don't say that, Mukara denied. For all the kasha of hell, both new and old, you are the most chaste and patient, waiting for the Lord to send you a good husband, she praised. Yeah, but I'd like Mando. Mando that he remained a renounced woman all her devotional life, Radha praised instead. Her only gold and lover is Bhagavan, no one else. Seriously, she's so pure. Radha openly gushed about the unknown renunciant. Okay, so yes, Mandodari is a self-insert, but <laughs> I'm like, not, I wish I was Mandodari in her purity. I'm not Mandodari in her purity. I'm Matri and I'm not on the level of Mandodari. Mandodari is like, you know, how I wish I was. Am I pure? No. 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 Okay. So that's out of the way. Okay, back to Mukara speaking. Yes, but as she said time and time again, it is not because she can't stand kids that she should be praised. All glory should be showered on the Grihastas willing to bear Krishna's children. Not at her choice not that her choice was not extraordinary, Mukara countered. She gave me the seeds of Bhakti. She helped me get steady in my service, introduced me to Gurudev, and helped me learn how to chant and dance to Harinam Prabhu. Truly, this woman is like a mother to me. And me. Radha spoke with overflowing affection. Um, mom, Kripa ventured, do, do I, did Aegis knew her? He asked, wanting to know more about this Mandodari, another god sister. Well, actually, he should have said, um, Ananda Rupini. Mokara shook her head. I'm just checking, okay. No, no, you never met her in your previous lifetime. Anyway, Radha interrupted as she jumped to the ground and assumed her human form. I think, I think we may need to stop worshipping Krishna's awesome servant. Not that there's anything wrong there. I just want to get the Sriracha pasta detector flags ASAP. 
It took some time for Krishna Kripa to realize who Radha was referring to. And then he burst into laughter. His mirth lasted until they met the hot sauce linguini on the way to the, to the sky tower. Wisely, the plant-like youth set this one out and let Radha do a repeat of what God had Basta did to this, to this evil snake that ate the sun. Her opinion about the fight and the taste of the, of the beast? I had cheap Tabasco that had more kick to it. Remember, she lives in the core of the hellish reactor. And, I mean, come on, there's lava flowing around, like magma. That's where she lives. It's, it's, uh, Akasha is, a, is a, being made of fire. She could potentially live on the sun, and she'd be like, yeah, that's, that's nice, nice and uh, cozy today. Mm, very crispy. Eventually, they make their way to the sky tower. The sp- As they made their way to the sky tower, the small family crossed paths with the Tsukiji Hongwangji. You looking for redemption? One of the guard, some berserking demon with a red sword, addressed them. You know, for your soul, don't you want the polytheistic alliance to save it? Reject this wretched universe. The other guard, a fake Ganesh by the look of it, spoke with what was probably the worst Hindi accent in existence. Leave behind this physical realm and find peace in the new universe. Just know, to let go of your physical body means embracing death. I am so sorry, Ganesh. Krishna Kripa just looked at the guy. Yeah, the fake Krishna definitely never read the Gita. Beside him, Radha Shyama Sundar growled. The false Ganesh stared. What? Radha licked her lips. You are covered in blood. The fake son of Shiva spoke as he intensely stared at the triumphant Kasha. This ain't blood, she corrected. It's some real weak hot sauce. <laughs> Krishna Kripa turned his face away, trying not to burst in laughter. Right, hot sauce. So, are you willing to die for salvation? Aganesha asked again, eager for three more souls to enter the temple of death. No, we're fine. Mokara flatly declined as she quickly walked away from the all-too-inviting portal to Yuki. A hundred meters away, and they finally groaned. Oh, my dear Lord Goranga! This guy's a freaking joke! Radha spat. To let go of your physical body means death. No shit, Sherlock, as if the body was alive in the first place. The angered Kasha kicked the trash can, sending the thing flying like a burning comet. Ah, and that demon has the rotten balls to call himself Krishna. That's it. I'm raiding this place and I'm dragging him back to Ekanamsa. Radha hissed as she tried to run back to the Tsukiji temple, only to be stopped by Mokara. Radha, you can't do that, the ancient hermit, hermit said as she held the cat by the scruff of the neck. We're not supposed to go there yet. At those words, Radha deflated, and Mokara turned to her son. I'm sorry, Betta. I know you want to save Yuki as fast as possible, but the Tsukichi Hongwangji is off limit. Krishna Kripa blinked. How did she? I can hear, hear your ten desires. Mukara rubbed the back of her head. It's not polite on my part to assume you would openly speak. Neither was... It's all right, Mom. It's not something you can stop so easily. Krishna Kripa was used to not be heard and to have things assumed about him or downright forced. Anyway, why could we just barge in, grab Yuki and Flynn and get out? The Driyad asked. He knew the power of his mother, and the Hellcat could control ghosts. It would be a piece of cake to just... First of all, I still don't know how much the admin hermit can tolerate my meddling. He's already aware of my presence, and I'm sure he will edit his realmless consequence, Mukara explained. Second, the Tsukiji Hongwanji we saw was but an empty illusion and a dead trap. A dead trap? Mokara turned to her son, and her atten- attention was diverted to someone who was coming right beside him, right behind him. Turning around, 
Krishna Kripa saw none other than Nozomi. Hater group. Sorry, I took a bit more time than expected. Nozomi addressed Mukara and her son. Had some picture to drop and a girl to see. Uh, by the way, Kripa, why did you leave your sister high and dry? They didn't even check on her after all that happened. Nozomi mildly scolded the Dryad. The servant of God made a face. I need some time without her. Sure, he still loved his sister, but how would she react to him having his mom again? And how about the fact that she had partially seen God and... So much had happened over the past last few days. His name has changed. His nature changed. He remembered who he was before. He had a mom who was a, who was me, who was a video game character, and an aunt who was from in, from this PC game. No, he had a mom who was a her an ancient prince, and an aunt who were from this PC game. And the fact that Azahi was had willingly followed the instruction of a demon while consulting him, and sure, what was happening was part of Krishna's plan, but still, Kripa needed a break for her, and maybe, maybe he would talk to her later when all was dealt with. And then, oh, Krishna, how can this simple brother sister relationship get so complicated? My dear Kripa, Material relationship and trans a material relationship is transient, transient and imperfect, but worry not, it's temporary. He hear this Lord speak from within his heart. Krishna, Krishna, shh, Kripa, I am in your heart. I told you I would never leave. Krishna, his Krishna spoke from in his heart. Now it's imperative you do not speak of of my name, oh my god, that's terrible. For the name Krishna has reached the same amount of infamy as the name Yehovah. The Supreme Personality of God had grumbled. All right, all right. Oh god, I missed you so much. Why did you leave? Did I do something wrong? Is it, is it because I'm... Krishna Kripa stumbled on his word. He had no idea what to do. He could hear Krishna in him. But he could not see him, let alone hug him. What about this, what to say about kissing him? No, Kripa, it's not your fault. Please, please, please don't say it's yours. Krishna Kripa knew God to be faultless, and he was a supreme pure, and only the pure one could even come close to him. And Krishna Kripa knew he did not fit the requirement. He was impure. Flashback time. So... Sanatan Goswami got some pretty bad skin disease as he was traversing the forest of Bengal to reach Jagannath Puri. It caused his skin to form wealth that would ooze with pus and blood, and they were painful also. Rupanuga Swami explained as Yuki and Aegis appear, appeared as a print of the golden avatar embracing another young man, Sanatan Goswami, but in this condition, Lord Sri Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would still give his a godly bear hug every time he would meet his dear devotee. Really? Yuki asked, his voice filled with wonder. So even if I'm even if I did sin in the past, Lord Nityananda and Goranga will God will not reject me? The brunette asked with a shy type of hope. Oh Yuki kun. Rupanuga Swami smiled compassionately, giving the ground leader of seas a very hardy pat on pat on the back, come both with a right, rigorous one-handed shoulder massage. Yes, my spiritual master is a very much a he will give a slap in the back of someone and he will massage their back. Their back. And it doesn't matter okay. As long as you're a god brother, because being a sannyas, there has to be a division between men and women. But otherwise, yeah, he sees his god brother, he will massage your shoulder. And even if it's not just a god brother, but even him, one of his own disciple, he will massage his shoulders. You're doing fine, Yuki. Just keep go just keep going on the path of bhakti like you are. The Lord says in Bhagavad Gita, Sarva Dharma Paritya. 
मम एक शरण व्रज अहम थम सर्व पापे पियो मोक्षयामी मा सुच The great servant of the Lord recited from memory, Abandon all varieties of religion and just surrender unto me. I shall deliver you from all sinful reactions. Do not fear. And what does it mean to surrender to God, to Krishna? Aegis asked. Rupanuga Swami turned to her. Surrendering to God, Krishna. means that you return to your original position as his eternal servant. Being a servant of God means that if he asks you something, you do it without any hesitation or consideration, whether it will be good or bad for you, he explained. Um, that part is a bit long. Let's stop here, all right? All right, I'll see you in a few more weeks. Hare Bo, Hare Krishna.